Hold on. Okay. I'd like to call the Wednesday, October 15th, 2014 Ordinance Committee to order. Um, Councillor Katerina is here, and also Councillor Benedict, myself, um, Councillor St. Clair. We have Tom Hall, who is our town manager, and Tracy is here as the clerk for today. Um, let's move on to item number three, approval of the minutes from August 13th. So moved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor? Okay, it's a vote. Um, item number four, discussion of the property tax assistance. And actually, Tom's going to take the lead on this. Sure. If you don't yeah, mind. Yeah, I had a resident approach me, and I uh, provided you a copy of the communication yeah. I had with her. I redacted her name at her request, but I, I think the substance uh, is a good lead into the conversation. And, yep. Um, she brought to my attention, well, she called me really looking for assistance on a property tax. She's yes finds herself in the unfortunate situation of having a official uh, disability, so she gets SSI benefits, and therefore she'll not likely to ever change in that status. Right. And it occurred to me that the, a taxpayer in that sort of class is mm -hmm. not unlike someone on a, they're on a fixed income. Right. And uh, our ordinance historically has pertained and applied only to um, folks 62 years or older, and there's some other eligibility requirements. But right. It's really an age um, related uh, program, but the fundamentals are really no different in that uh, people on fixed income are likely to have a challenging time mm -hmm. uh, paying their taxes. So uh, with that, I thought it would be a, a worthy item to at least bring to this this group to yep. get some feedback on. Yeah. Um, and I know that there's been some conversation in finance committee about looking at this ordinance anyway and maybe yeah. Modifying the the overall benefit, the dollar amount. Yeah, that's been a conversation point. Mm -hmm. It's really not gone anywhere, but it may be something that could be tied into the conversation going forward. Well, maybe if we push a little bit here. Right, right. So one of the things that I think we should do, if if there's you know policy interest in pursuing this, uh, is I can try to do some analysis of kind of financial impact. What would it cost? Yeah, um, right. What I don't know is how accessible the data is for folks. I, I suspect I could find uh, some information, names withheld, of course, uh, mm -hmm. to know how many people in our town currently uh, qualify for SSI benefits. Right. That would that'd be my concern is <clears throat> once we open it up, <laughs> then what happens? Yeah, this is a matter that we budget for annually, so yeah. we would need to have as accurate an estimate of imp mm -hmm. financial impact as possible. So that's something that um, I could spend some time just seeing if data is available to appreciate who currently qualifies. Um, I should have prefaced this by saying we, we should be very clear as to eligibility, and, and perhaps the easiest way is to if someone has qualified for federal SSI benefits, yeah. that's a pretty rigorous process. Yeah. Um, that's probably the best uh, measure of eligibility right. for someone in this class. Yeah. Um, and they could provide evidence that they actually qualify and are receiving those benefits. I suppose it's possible, but it seems highly unlikely that someone that, ult that qualifies uh, will probably continue to for life. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that those disabilities uh, go away. I, I, don't think, I, I don't think so. Not in... And, and all I can relate is kind of anecdotally, I know people that have gone through that process, it takes years and it's very yes. rigorous. So It does, and it's, um, I, I'm just speaking from a little bit of experience with some, someone. Uh, it, it can be a very arduous task to get approval of that and then to have it, get it up and running. So not unlike what we do now, which is we rely on eligibility through the state's program, mm -hmm. Uh, through tax filing, mm -hmm. um, it would be great to, to rely on another existing program and have comfort that that's a good program and a good way to determine eligibility. So I, I think it's doable, um, and I'm interested in your your reaction and feedback whether we should pursue it. I, I I'm always gonna waver on the side of helping more residents in the town of Scarborough that you know uh, that we can. Um, I'm a little bit cautious only because I'd like to see the numbers and see who else would qualify for that and, um, you know, would we be, you know, right. opening up a big uh, big can of worms and 
I don't know. Uh, but in my personal opinion, if we can help these, I mean, if you're, if you are, like you said, if you're on, if you qualify and you've made it through the SSI, um, and you're getting those benefits, you, there's a reason why you're getting them. Um, and it, and like you said, it's not an easy process. And the government now is cracking down even more, so the process is even harder now. So. I, Anything from you? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, I'll tell you from a first-hand experience, uh, I had Social Security disability for the last few years. <clears throat> Once I turned 65, they took it away. Bang. Didn't consult me or anything. They just put me on Social Security. Right. So they convert you from the disability right. to the normal yep. Social Security? Yep. And was there a major difference in that? There was none. No monetary difference? No monetary difference. Hmm. It's just the program they move them into. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I don't think that if we make it a requirement to be on disability, that that's going to stand forth because at 65, it stops. Well, their eligibility then could be by, uh, by age. Right. Um, you know, the, the existing program is based on 62 years or older. We need to check that there's uh, that those age requirements don't conflict with each other. Right. I mean, we have. A vi we, I think people don't realize the size of our elderly population in Scarborough. I think people look at Scarborough as a um, as a as the way we were ten years ago when we were booming with school children. Um, I think people forget that we have. Um, this elderly population, and it's important to take care of them, in my opinion, as, at least as much as we possibly can. So I would say it's my opinion, and do you want to weigh in? Yeah, I I, well, I've got a couple of questions. Sure. Because um, SSI, SSDI uh, can be any age. Okay. Um, right. So I know when we we're, when were applying it the way we were applying mm -hmm. it in the original intent, you have a way of finding out what the household income is. Because you can have someone collecting SSDI or SSI in a household, but yet they have a spouse or whomever who's making a lot of money. I mean, it, it you know, it's based on their own condition, not it on. It is based on their yeah. own. Yeah. So we would want to look at that, in my opinion. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything else? No, that was my. Yeah, uh, that was the. But th I think I think it makes a lot of sense if we can again assist people who desperately need help in being able to keep their house Absolutely. and assistance with tax. Then I'm all for it. Yeah. Jim, uh, the what's the correct acronym? SSDI. Well, uh, there's SSI and there's SSDI, and I can't remember the difference. Okay. Well, I know the difference is that SSDI is a disability that you can get. SSI is the, what Jim was moved on to after okay, SSDI. Okay, after SSDI. Okay. Right. Yeah, I couldn't remember. <clears throat> so it's the, the DI. The DI is the disability, is the disability, disability one, yeah. Right. Um, and that is true. Um, speak Again, unfortunately, speaking from experience, uh, it doesn't. it is based solely on you as your person. Not on the household income. Correct. Right. So maybe there's a second tier uh, review who looks at household right. income. Yeah, we may have to do that. Okay. Um, but if you could maybe, yeah, I would I would say we would table this um, and let Tom get some of the numbers and talk more about it. Yeah, because we need to know language. Yeah, obviously. So we can't move today. I think oh, no. They're just looking for no. advice. No. Um, this, was, this was brought on because Tom had a, um, right. a resident ask right. about it. And so it, that's why it's on our table. Yep. Incidentally, this resident was willing to meet with you yeah. individually or kind of outside of the public view, yep. if that's of interest yeah. to you. Um, that's fine. So I'd definitely that's do it. That's something we in the future if you want to. Sure, absolutely. The other thing we have to be careful of, um, even well, either one's SSDI or, or Social Security income, is they do have the ability to go out and have a second job or have a job. Right. And there's certain tiers that if they make under so much, they don't pay tax, but if they make over, they can lose part of their Social Security. 
so it's, it's a very tricky. So you're talking about SSI, right? Both. Yeah, I think with DI you can earn some income too. Um, yes, you can. Yeah. But okay. not a whole lot. I, mean, yeah, I don't think it's, I think it's very minuscule. It would not be enough to run it or to maintain a household. Or yeah, maintain it's about a household. 15 grand. Well, that well, that's well, why I say I, it should be based on household. It should be a household income thing because because this the way it's written now it's based on you know you choose one person in the house so to speak who benefits from it you can't give the benefit five different benefits to five different people in the same house mm -hmm. um, but but the the um, overriding um, income thing is is. Under Section 3B, because we've got applicant is qualified to receive the tax credit provisions of state of Maine, which is an income right. mm -hmm. formula. So if we're going to do this, we need to, to me, you need to have some household income formula so that you're not giving this benefit to someone who's got a spouse that's making two hundred thousand dollars or. Well, and I know. think that's where finance can come in too, yeah. and they can work with us, work with us on some numbers. I mean, they, mm -hmm. there, there are a number of people, in my yeah. opinion. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't thought too much to it, but you're right. Those safeguards, uh, right. clear eligibility standards would need to be defined and, right. and, Absolutely. and safeguards installed. It just occurred to me that folks on fixed income are pretty much in the same right. place, regardless of age. Right. That's correct. That's right. So I'll do some work. I want to better understand SSDI and yes. what the... Okay if there's multiple different tiers and such. Uh, yeah, and I actually have some information I can share oh, that with you. And I will uh, do my best to do some, to analyze if we can determine how many currently qualify okay. in the zip code or yeah. however else they do it. Yeah. And extrapolate from there what the impact might be, financial yeah. impact. Yeah. Because again, this is a matter we budget for annually. Right. And uh, we have history on the current program and know pretty well what the funding requirements are year to year. Yeah. Adding in a who. A, a new subset of eligible right. taxpayers, uh, we'd have to determine an estimate of what that might cost us. Right. I mean, I mean that we could look at that, and that could sh shoot the whole thing sure. out. And it, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do it, but we could also maybe look at it, and it could be very beneficial to some people in this town. Which my my hunch is that there'll be far l fewer p people that qualify mm -hmm. under this standard than do under the age standard. But yeah. I, I might be wrong about that. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Thanks, Tom. Okay. Um, that is all we have on the agenda this week. Um, I don't, I know, um, I don't know, we have other new business. Does anybody have new business that in the audience that they would like to bring before the ordinance committee? I know we don't usually do it like this, but we're going to today. So does anybody, no? No? <coughs> Councilor Blaze? Okay. Yes. You have to go up there, though. Sorry. <laughs> and we need your name and address, please. Alisa Boxer, 16 Minuteman Drive. But I didn't know if I bring something up. Yeah, go if ahead. you're allowed to talk about it. <laughs> or not. Maybe you don't even have to. I'll just bring it up. I, well, I, I'm open to talking about. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, It's about the cell tower issue. Okay. And th thank you again for all of the hard work that you've done on it. Um, regardless of whether there's a vote tonight, it does appear that we're going to get several new towers. And at this point, I, I am actually fairly comfortable with all the work that's been done and a lot of the changes that have been made. Um, I would respectfully ask that since we're looking at several new towers in the town um, that you take a look at certain areas, for example, pole-mounted cell antennas that could undermine the effort, um, could undermine the intent of the ordinance, mm -hmm. which was, um, as Dan Bacon said at the last council meeting, that the intent of the ordinance is to keep keep this stuff out of neighborhoods. Right. And so my concern is that, albeit unintentionally, mm -hmm. that that the stuff can creep even closer to neighborhoods. So given that we can't talk about health, I'm not going to talk about health, but um, 
I just ask that you try to find creative solutions, like the fact that they look ugly, and since we're going to be getting so many new towers, uh, maybe that maybe it's okay to put tighter restrictions on things like the telecommunications facilities right. in areas that will be served by the new towers. Well, um, um, I know that we're going to offer right. amendments tonight. Um, I can tell you personally that I've talked with Tom, and I find those to be extremely ugly. I don't think they fit Scarborough at all. <laughs> they don't fit in at all in Scarborough. Um, so we'll hopefully have um, amendments that will help us. We want to keep moving forward, but we also want to um, make sure that people know that we're hearing what people are saying and we're, and we're doing what the residents of Scarborough are, are asking and what they're needing us to do. Thanks. So just know that tonight um, you'll be more than welcome to talk again. Um, and we are working on amendments. Staff is extremely right. busy this afternoon. We've hit, we've hit them at the last hour yeah. again, um, and they are um, working on those amendments now. I totally appreciate it. The more I look into it, mm -hmm. when towers go up, there's often uh, some supporting infrastructure that goes along with it, and it's actually in the neighborhoods that are served by the towers, unless communities come forward ahead of time and say, basically, no, the towers are going to be enough, especially since we're looking at a, as a community at several new towers. So you do that? just ask that you keep that in mind. So you're yeah. saying they built the tower, and then there is an existing piece that's further away from it? Yes. That time. Yep. Um, there, are, there are boosters. Okay. So yes, yeah, say in a neighborhood that's served by a new tower, mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, a sub an additional network of okay. Of the that's, and that's what we're going to address tonight. Perfect. So. Good. And, and from a, and it's from a purely monetary yeah. viewpoint, right now Scarborough doesn't have the density of population that I don't think the cell providers would even want to spend that money. But I certainly understand the concerns, so that's why we're going to. Thank bring forth an amendment. All right? Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. Uh, one thing I wanted to let you know, uh, when they brought up the fact of, of putting towers on top of the electrical lines, mm -hmm. that I think they forget that up in North Scarborough, where Blueberry Lane goes down and Thunder Road goes down, they end at the electric lines. So keeping them away from residences mm -hmm. is not going to be satisfied by putting them there. Oh. And there's other roads. There's one off the other side of Broad Turn that goes down and goes right under them. Mm -hmm. uh, Broad Turn Road goes right under them also. So we're still a bit of a ways away. Yeah. Well, are, you, are you talking about high transmission? High voltage. High voltage transmission. Yep. Yeah, they were already in those areas, so... I, well, I don't, we don't need to get an argument about it. You know, those houses are already there. People know that it's that they're there. That's actually. And that's why I don't have as big a deal about if they put an antenna on the high transmission because you've already well, got the issue there. I, uh, I didn't hear anything about that from them. No, we did not. All we I did, heard was they did. wanted to put them on there, and it's like I feel. Well, let's be a hundred percent. Yeah. Being transparent. What's there? What do you want to do? I don't mean you. I know. Because I, though, I, I, don't I don't like. On the high voltage. Excuse me? Per I don't mind them on the high voltage lines for that reason because they do tend to be, I mean, people who have issues with, with EMS, um, if they're living near high voltage power lines, that's. Could it's affecting be them also. That would be affecting them oh, also. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I mean, this is just personally, you know, if I'm living near a high tension corridor, yep. then I probably don't have deep concerns about EMF. Um, that, that's just me. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and that to me is different. Than, and in Yarmouth, you do see them up on the, yeah. on the high voltage lines in its line of sight, so they go further. It's, old, it's like a cell phone tower. 
as opposed to the residential utility, regular utility poles, um, which are do tend to be inside neighborhoods. Absolutely. So that, that's my concern, not the high voltage. In that's fact, my, yeah. uh, we share that concern. Yeah. So. Thank you. So thank you. Thank All you. the work you do. <laughs> Tom, did you want to say anything? You good? Um, I'm good. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else? You guys good? Okay. All right. Um, new business. Do you, does anybody have anything that they want to put on the agenda? I think the next meeting would be after the election, so maybe we should hold off on that. Yeah, and I have f three or four things that I'll yeah. hold in advance, and I'll pick it up with the next chair. Absolutely. Um, for, uh, just regarding their next meeting and how they want to tackle yeah. this stuff. So yeah. there's, there's a ready supply of material <laughs> yeah. for them. There's a couple of things we've, we've been putting off because it's just, it didn't need to be attended to right now. Right, right. Okay, all right. Anybody want to call the adjournment? Move to adjourn. Second. All right. Thank you.